Welcome to East of Eden Readings. I'm your Chief Consultant Raheem, aka Reverend Rock, and tonight I'm going to specifically talk to the ladies. And I don't want anybody to take this personal or as an attack on women, but kind of try to look at it. Matter of fact, don't kind of try to look at it. Look at it as constructive criticism because it's coming from a place of love. It's coming from a place of compassion. And I composed this myself again several years ago. A lot of my material I've just been created throughout my life. And what I do is with my content, I just go back in my notes and I just, you know, reiterate it to you. But anyway, this one I'll need y'all to pay close attention because it's important. You know? Unfortunately, we men are extremely shallow and tremendously superficial. That is a well-known documented fact. It is not a positive one, I might add, but it is an actual none the less. Thus, it isn't a secret that at first glance, instinctively, we men are going to engage because of what appeals to our sense of sight. Typically, her physique, according to the individual's taste, and in the buoyancy of her bodily dimensions in motion. With that being said, irregardless of the natural structure of her, face, of her facial features, if the object of our affections face is layered in foundation, mascara, blush, eyeshadow, lipstick, eyeliner, etc., then goes on to further apply synthetic eyelashes, arched eyebrows, and search colored contact lenses, puts on manufactured wig to cover her own natural organic hair, straps on a girdle concealed beneath her outerwear in a covert attempt to reconstruct her figure to what she deems as attractive, puts on a push-up bra to accentuate her breast, stilettos to round her buttocks, and bestow her calves with definition, attaches extended acrylic colored nails to the tip of her fingers and her toes, not to mention plucks facial hair, shaves legs, armpits, and vagina, adorns herself with excessive, excessive costume jewelry and ostentatious accessories. Then it is only empirical and safe to say that we men haven't fallen for the authentic, unadulterated essence of that particular woman. Sequentially, after spending time with her and she feels a little more comfortable and confident in the biotic being that she is, she then begins to reveal her natural self to him. And of course, by this distinct and of course, by this distinct time, he is consequently insanely infatuated with her persona. First Peter three three through four from the King James Version Bible. Ladies must not let their beauty be something external. Beauty doesn't come from hairstyles, gold jewelry, or clothes. Rather, beauty is something internal that can't be destroyed, like energy. Anyway, beauty expresses itself in a gentle and quiet attitude, which God considers precious. Again, 1 Peter 3, 3-4, three through 4, from the King James Bible. You know... In contrast, us men, we might get a haircut, shave, get a tape up or whatever. But when we get up and go, even when we're going out to look dapper dad, you know, we just get up, take a shower, wash our face, put some lotion on and go. Y'all get our pure, unadulterated selves. You know. With that being said, It is, I hear like comedians and everybody that disdains and talks and laughs about the long eyelashes, the fake wigs. You know, it's obvious that, man, we don't like that. You know, it, it, it's, it's no mystery, you know. Everybody knows that, but yet y'all still continue to wear it. Now, what baffles me is, you know, 
why do y'all continue to wear it if y'all are consciously aware that men disdain it? You see, men, on the other hand, you know, it's obvious why they, you know, work hard to become that CEO, to buy that Lamborghini and that mansion on the hill. They do that to impress y'all. So in order so that they may sleep with y'all. Period. If y'all was giving away sex for free, if men can have sex with any with, with whomever woman he want, whenever he want, I guarantee you this would be a different world. In any event, you know, but back to my question, and this is a serious question. It's nothing that, like I said again, I'm not trying to attack anybody. This is not a, 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 a attack woman thing, no. No, this is not this is not what it is. That is not what this is. Like I said, again, this is coming from a place of love. I'm just curious as to why you do it when you consciously know that men don't like it. And I get it. You're going to say, well, we're not doing it for men. We're doing it for ourselves. All of that yipping and yapping and, you know, cliches and stuff. But I'm seriously looking for an answer. I'm not looking for no feedback, you know, you know yap, yap, yap. You know, if any one of you intelligent, you know, uh, mature woman can answer that for me, I would love to know what's that all about. Oh, and another thing, this, this, this came on my mind. Another thing I have a question about. Like I said, again, these are honest questions. You know, I'm, I mean, I don't know a lot about women. You understand what I'm saying? But, and this is for the gentleman too. Is it me or is it, like, and I consider myself one of the nicest looking men in the universe. Everybody that knows me knows that. But anyway, when I walk down the aisle in a grocery store, a library, you know, and you see an attractive woman or any woman for that matter, and particularly, you know, um, the, the so-called African-American woman. I'm going to use that term for, for right now. The so-called African-American woman. When you see her coming and... and you can see through your peripheral vision that you're about to approach, you know. Now, here's the thing. Any other nationality woman, you know, will say hi or, you know, acknowledge you, give you some sort of eye contact and acknowledge that your presence, you know. Even, you know, white women are to excuse me to death. Excuse me, how you doing? Excuse, excuse me, excuse me. Like, like to excuse you to death, you know, which I think is cute. But anyway, but with the African-American woman, when they see you and the approach is coming, they turn their head. Don't even say hi. Don't give you any type of expression of acknowledgement that you're there. And I'm curious as to why do y'all do that? Oftentimes, and I say that's done to me at least 90% of the time. I'm thinking, why don't you want to look at me? I'm beautiful. And the only thing I could come up is you're int intimidated or that's one or two. Could it be that you're just tired of men just pushing up on you and men that you deem not worthy or not worth a damn are approaching you? Could that be it? Let me know. Like I said, again, a mature, intelligent woman, please, these are questions for y'all. Not you yap, yap, yappers that didn't finish the sixth grade. I don't want to talk to y'all. But anyway, that was be, that's a little sarcasm, though. I know y'all finished the sixth grade, but you know what I mean. As far as I'm talking, as far as you know, your mental maturity, your mental maturity. I'm gonna add on to this because I'm not just gonna be attacking women. Like I said, this is coming from a place of love and compassion. I also composed this again several years ago. That is the the contrast to what I just read. It was unfortunate that we, the descendants of Nubia, and a Mexum, an Omeruca, had no positive male role models, no masculine guidance, no rites of passage here in this corporation of the United States. Nothing but gangsters, entertainers, womanizers, and men that worship the dollar. My beloved sisters, please understand this. We never intended to hurt you intentionally. We never planned to be players. We were conditioned to look at the woman as a commodity. A new sexual encounter is like a narcotic to the nigger. 
No one in the neighborhood elaborated or was even aware on how sacred intercourse was or is. We were just taught to have fun. A real man was an endangered species throughout the community. The men we were supposed to despise, the dope pushers, the pimps, the gangsters, were usually the ones we chose to aspire to be like for some reason. And up to this day, we are affected by this. It all began when this corporation of the United States decided that it was in their best interest to encourage the Nubian woman to accept government assistance and that it would be more economically beneficial for her and her offsprings survival than actually having an employed husband in the home after the 1960s and integration began to flourish. We are the consequence, the karmic debt of that coerced decision. This is why putting out this information is so imperative. It gives people the choice of if they want to evolve or not. I mean, it is what it is, and it's the truth. You know, I remember, you know, being an adolescent and thinking that you wasn't a real man till you got to jail. How did I get that mentality? I don't know. You see, you know, I grew up in Cambridge Heights, Queens. You see on Linden Boulevard, the, the, the guys driving down the street with the nice cars with the rims, you know, your age, you aspire to be like that. You think they're cool. You young. You don't know no better. You know? In my situation, my father didn't leave me. Unfortunately, he died of a heart attack. Be it as it may. In the house that I was living in, there wasn't any man. And I'm not making up no excuses. By all means, don't get that twisted. You know? I'm just saying. You know, because actually, I had a great upbringing. You know? My my stepmother, my mother, did an impeccable job in rearing me and my sister. Contrary to popular belief. You know, I salute the Johnson family, the Foster Wiley family. You know. But yeah. And like I said again, we must unite as a people. This division we have going on, the separation between the sexes amidst our community, the, the Amerikans, the Nubian, the darker shaded people, the separation that we have to go on, it has to stop. It is imperative that that stops. Take a look around you. No other nationalities are going through the civil wars inside their races, community, as we are. Take a look around you. Now my thing is, you know, the youngsters the soldiers, the warriors, you know, the ones that, you know, partake in the gangs, Crips, Bloods, Vice Lords, GDs, whomever. If all, just imagine, just imagine if all of them united as one, all of them, if the Crips and Bloods united, if the GDs, the Black Gorilla family, whatever gang that out there, minority gangs that are out there, and they all united as one fist. All of them as one fist. As one unit. Because we all originated from the same origin. America. You all have a common enemy. It's time for y'all to wake up and stop sleeping. Y'all are playing. Metal 
kind of woman, you're beautiful without the hair weave. You're beautiful without the foundation. You're beautiful without the lashes. Just be yourself. Just be yourself, baby. Just be yourself. You're beautiful. When I see y'all women do that, what it tells me is that y'all not happy with who you are. When you have to hide behind a mask, a layered face of 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 pig intestines, because that's what it is, and 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 and, and, and fetus and the amniotic sac of fetuses. When you have to apply that to your face in order for you to have some sort of self esteem, that speaks volumes. That lets me know that you're not happy with who you are, baby. And many of you can't even leave the house without it. Embrace who you are. We was taught to hate ourselves. We must unlearn that which we have learned. Now! Get out of those complexes. Cause that, is, be it as it may, that's a complex. When you don't like your own face that you were born with, you don't even like your own face. When you wake up in the morning, you don't like what you see in the mirror, so you put an amniotic sac on your face. <laughs> A placenta on your face. That's where makeup comes from. Pig intestines and the, the fetus of uh, the, the, the amniotic sac of, of of human fetuses. What y'all call the, when the water breaks, the egg, whatever. Yeah, that stuff. Really, the amniotic sac. I'm not an obstetrician or a gynecologist, but y'all know what it is. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But anyway, in any event, again, I'm not trying to attack anybody. You know, this is not an all-out campaign to destroy the Mexican woman. The Caucasoid already did that. It's time for beings like me to shake you up, to wake you up, and to be a the superior being that you are, to be true to yourselves, to come out into your realm, into your being. I love you. And that is why I'm doing this. I'm the Reverend Rock of the East of Eden Readings. Peace. And I'm out of here like Flatman.